Lesson 9, 7, factoring special polynomials. Uh, let's jump right in. How do you factor x squared minus 9? Well, a lot of people just show how you do it, but let's just think about it for a second. It's actually got a middle term. It's just 0. So if you factored this with the technique we showed before, we would say, well, x plus x minus, and what multiplies up to 9 and adds to 0, pardon me, subtracts to 0. Well, then it's obvious 3 and 3. So what we want to do is come up with a shortcut. And if you look at this, let's take x squared minus 16 this time. You know it's always going to be x plus x minus, and then it's always going to be 4 and 4, because plus 4 minus 4 kills the middle term, and that's what we're looking for here. So when doing these problems, just put plus minus in the middle and factor the first one, or take square root of the first one and the square root of the second one. And that's it. So here, even though it's written wrong, we can still do it. 6 plus, 6 minus, 11n, 11n, done. A lot of people struggle with this because they don't realize how simple it is, how quick it is. So just make sure you see it and shouldn't have any problems. Here's another similar one. <clears throat> one of the giveaways here for these problems is that you've got perfect squares. And the perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169. There's more. It's a good start. So whenever you see perfect squares, there's a 1 out front, 25, 9, 16. Most likely, you're going to be dealing with what we call a perfect square. The one above is called the difference of two squares. And the one below is called the perfect squares. You've got to be careful, though. Sometimes it's a trick, and it's actually not a perfect square. Look at the first and last terms. See if they're perfect, and then try it. Minus plus goes minus minus 5, 5. 3x plus 3x plus 4, 4. Just like always, we've got to double check. So negative 5. Plus negative 5 is negative 10. This one you have to do the outside and the inside. 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. So it works. And that's called a perfect square. So how do we solve? 4y squared minus 64 equals 0. Now you look and you say, okay, it's got a minus. It's got a perfect square, it's got a perfect square, it's got a perfect square. So that should work out where I get 2y plus 8, 2y minus 8, and I could solve it. y equals negative 8 over 2 equals negative 4. Space that out a little bit better. Negative 8 over 2, negative 4. And over here we have y equals 8 over 2 equals 4. And you can check both those back in the original. 4 squared is 16. 4 times 16 is 64. 64 minus 64 is 0. Looks like it works. So here's the other one. Say, oh, look, perfect square. Perfect square. Should work. 3x minus 3x minus 2. 2. Let's check it. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus negative 6 equals negative 12. Looks like it works. So now we solve. Don't have to do both sides because we have the same thing. So only really have to do one side. Put it back in and check. Turns out it works. That's it. Look for your perfect squares. Have that list that was up here written down, sitting off to the side. 
it can save you a lot of time. The good news is, if you like just factoring the long way, you can do it that way too. It's going to work either way. This will just save you some time, and you will see a lot of these on ACT tests and a lot of them on tests that are very long because they think that you're supposed to be able to do them quickly. Good luck.